Hi students, welcome to session 1 of soil. Students, in today's session we will learn about soil and soil formation. So students, let us get familiar with this term and let us learn about it in deep. Now students, you know very well that soil is one of the Im most important natural resources. It supports the growth of plants by holding the roots firmly and supplying water and nutrients. It is also the home for many organisms. Soil is essential for agriculture too because agriculture provides food, clothing and shelter for all. So soil is thus an inseparable part of our life and the earthy fragrance of soil after the first rain is always refreshing. Students, in India our diet is mainly made up of cereals and vegetables and these are obtained from plants. Wheat primarily comes from Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana, etc. Even the major rice producing states are Andhra Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Punjab. But why does so much of the rice and wheat come from these states? Why don't other areas or other, other straight states grow as much as these states? Students, the answers to all these questions are hidden in just one word and that is soil. So, what is soil? Let us see the definition of soil. Yes, students, soil is the uppermost layer of the earth's crust and is usually composed of a thin layer of mineral particles and a layer of dead and decayed plant and animal remains called humus. So what is soil? It is the uppermost layer of earth's crust. We will also see its composition later on. But do remember that it is con composed of a thin layer of mineral particles and a layer of dead and decaying plant and animal remains which is termed as humus. Now let us see one beautiful image of soil and humus. Now this is the beautiful image of soil. And this is the image of humus. As we know that a layer of dead and decaying plant and animal remains is called humus. And you can see very clearly in this image, in this picture, that there are many plants and animals, decayed plants and animal remains. So this is humus and this is soil which is composed of many particles and humus too. However, soil does not have the same properties everywhere and therefore different varieties of plants grow in different areas. And that is why we have some states growing more of a particular crop than others. Like I said before, that wheat primarily comes from Punjab, Uttar Pradesh and Haryana. And rice producing states are also Punjab, Uttar Pradesh and Andhra Pradesh. So why does so much of rice and wheat comes, come from these states? Because we have some states growing more of a particular crop than others. Students, have you ever gave a thought that what living things can you find in soil? Or is it only a layer of dirt and mud? Well, soil is not just a layer 
of dirt and mud it is actually filled with life means there are a variety of insects reptiles and many other animals right under our feet soil also provides the vital nutrients required for plants to grow and thrive thus all living organisms depend directly or indirectly on soil so it is a very important layer of earth's sorry earth's crust and it is also a shelter for many organisms microorganisms and other animals that is why we say that all living organisms depend directly or indirectly on soil now students we are through with the introduction of soil now let us see the other topic yes soil formation or formation of soil now students the formation of soil as we discussed in the previous grades it happens over a very long period of time well it can take 1000 years or more so soil is formed from the weathering of rocks and minerals the surface rocks break down into smaller pieces through a process of weathering and is then mixed with moss and organic matter over time this creates a thin layer of soil and plants help the development of the soil but how yes plants attract animals and when the animals die their bodies decay decaying matter makes the soil thick and rich and this continues until the soil is fully formed so the soil then supports many different plants so in short we can say that soil formation is a slow stepwise and a long process and it takes around thousands of years about thousands of years to form a layer of soil just a few centimeters thick it is a result of continuous breaking down of rocks by a process called weathering so let us now see that what is meant by weathering yes students weathering is the disintegration of rocks on the earth's surface caused by the exposure to natural forces such as wind water frost roots of plants etc so weathering is a process of the breaking down of rocks or disintegration of rocks and so there are two different types of weathering first is the physical weathering second one is the chemical weathering so now let us see what is meant by these two types of weathering students physical weathering means in this process rocks are broken down into smaller pieces and it is a mechanical process and does not involve any change in the characteristics of the original rock so this process goes on naturally naturally means it may be caused by temperature differences frost growing roots of plants movement of animals etc so this is also a very long process rocks are broken down into smaller pieces by temperature differences by growing roots of plants by frost etc so this is the physical weathering means it is a mechanical process the main difference between physical and chemical weathering is that physical weathering is a mechanical process chemical weathering is a chemical process not a mechanical process so now let us see that 
what is meant by chemical weathering yes students chemical weathering is a process in which existing minerals are broken down into new mineral components and in this process the chemical nature of the rock gets changed in physical weathering no chemical nature takes place or nothing gets changed it is only broken down into smaller pieces but in this process in chemical weathering the chemical nature of the rock gets changed like water water is one of the main agents of chemical weathering so this is the main difference between physical and chemical weathering in physical weathering it breaks down the rocks but what it's made of stays the same in chemical weathering it still breaks down the rocks but it may change what it is made up of for instance a hard material may change to a soft material after after chemical weathering but not after physical weathering right so these are the types of weathering which takes place in the soil formation in the next session we will learn about the process of weathering which are further divided into some stages right so we will learn about the process of weathering in the next session i hope you enjoyed today's session see you in the next session till then keep learning keep enjoying and have a nice time